Hey, welcome to the Art of Code. What you see behind me here is the output of an algorithm called the Game of Life. And that algorithm can create all kinds of chaotic and random looking things like you see behind me right now. Uh, but it can also be employed to uh, deliberately create some amazing things. And uh, the rules for this are really quite simple. Uh, actually, this is one of the great examples of how you can get very complex emergent behavior from very, very simple rules. And so in this video, I thought I'd go over those rules and show you some of the crazy examples and then create uh, this algorithm from scratch so you can play with it yourself. So if that interests you, then you should definitely grab a cup of tea or a mug of tea uh, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so how does this work? Um, well, uh, we start with a grid, and in the game, and in, in the case of the game of life, that grid is a square grid. Um, and here, I just showed a tiny part of that grid uh, uh, with only nine grid cells. Uh, but if you want more interesting things, then you need a much larger grid. Like for instance, you could have the grid that is the size of your entire screen, where every pixel is a grid cell. But here I'm only showing three by three. Uh, and then uh, these individual pixels in, in, this, in this grid, uh, in the case of Game of Life, they're called cells. So each of these cells, they can either be dead, like they are right now, or they can be alive, like this one is right now. And then the way the algorithm works is that it goes through different time steps. And at every step, it, it evaluates every cell in the grid and it, and it checks whether that cell should be dead or alive in the next generation. And the way it do, does that is by only uh, three rules. So first, every cell can either be dead or alive, uh, but then the rule is um, any live cell with two or three live neighbors survives. Okay, so this is a live cell, uh, but it doesn't have any live neighbors, so, so that, this rule does not apply to this, uh, uh, to this cell. Um, then any dead cell with three live neighbors becomes a live cell. So all of these cells around here, they're dead cells, but all of them, they only have one live neighbor, right? Namely this one. So all of these cells, th so that rule does not apply to those cells. Uh, and then the third rule is any other cell is going to be dead in the next generation. So if we took this pattern and we evolved at one time step, we would expect this cell to die and everything else stays dead. So let's have a look at that. Uh, Playgameoflife.com, so let's get the same situation here, uh, where I have one live cell and everything else is dead. Well, we just figured out that like in the next generation, that cell should be dead, and it, and it is. So, so there's that. So now, what happens if I, uh, if I gave this one cell two live neighbors? If I give this one two live neighbors, then uh, uh, the, um, the first rule applies, which is that any live cell with two or three live neighbors survives, right? Um, so, uh, so this cell has two live neighbors, so it will survive. The other cells actually also have two live neighbors, right? This one has this one and this one, and this one has this one and this one. So all of these three cells are going to survive in the next generation. And now let's look at the dead cells. So uh, this dead cell has only one live neighbor. Uh, this one has two live neighbors. This one has two. This one has one. So these one also have one and two, but there's one cell that has three live neighbors, which is this one over here. Um, and that what like the third rule applies to that one. Any dead cell with three live neighbors becomes a live cell. Uh, so I expect that in the next generation, this cell is going to be turned on and the other one just stay on. And that is true. And now if I try to continue this, nothing happens. You see here the generation, nothing happens because this is a stable situation. And this is what's called in life a still life. So there are certain patterns in life that do not change anymore once they're there. Uh, and this is one of them. Um, let me show you another kind of pattern. Um, what we could do, for instance, is this pattern here. And this pattern, uh, if we check here, that um, uh, well, here, let me just play it and see what happens. So this pattern oscillates like this. And the reason why, if I just stop it, is that 
Well, the middle cell has two life neighbors, so the middle cell will survive in the next generation. This cell only has one life neighbor, so this cell will die. This cell will also die. Uh, and then for all the dead cells in this generation, well, all of these have like one life neighbor, right? This one has one, this one has one, this one has two life neighbors, but this one has three life neighbors. And also this one has three life neighbors. So these ones are gonna come alive. Um, and so that's what you're seeing. And now you have the same situation, but rotated 90 degrees, right? So these ones are gonna come alive, these ones are gonna die. And that's why that happens like that. So this is called an oscillator. This is a period two oscillator because it, like, it takes two steps to get back to where it was. Uh, there are many different kinds of oscillators with different periods and whatnot. Okay, so now we had a still life and we had an oscillator. Uh, and now check what happens if I just add two things to this. And let's, let's just click on that a couple times. So that turns into this, that turns into that, that turns into this, and that turns into that. And now I have the same pattern that I started with only it's not in the same position, it's over, it's over by one. So what happens if I, if I keep running into uh, generations on this, then I have a pattern that walks away. And this is called a glider. And um, gliders are the basic building blocks, well, together with oscillators and, and still lives, are the basic building blocks that you can use to do amazing things. Because a glider is, is basically a packet of information that you can move from one from one position to another position. You could see this as a as a bit of information, and um, and with all of these building blocks, uh, you can actually uh, do some amazing things. Um, you can actually build a computer with this, believe it or not. So these are the basic building blocks that you can use to build logic gates uh, and um, and logic gate or logic gate uh, XOR and negate um, and maybe one or two other ones uh, that you can use to build a computer uh, and it's it's kind of mind-blowing to to think about that and you'd be like okay well what does that even mean a computer inside of life uh, well let me show you uh, let me show you an example of that so here <coughs> we have the game of life. If you look here, this is all just cells that are either dead or alive. And uh, it's a very big, complicated, complicated object. And if I press play on this, if I press run, and from this uh, position, you don't really see much, but if we zoom in, and you see that everything's working, it's doing stuff, and you see these gliders that I talked about that are running around everywhere and bouncing off stuff. and and you can see that this, somebody actually made a clock out of this. Let me just go a little bit slower because it's running really, really fast. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on. But yeah, you see like there is a bit of information that just jumps into here and it multiplies. And, and soon you will see other bits of information flying out here. And they're going into this seven segment display to, to, to turn on and off the different segments. And now I don't know all the specifics of this, but basically these are all um, structures that create those gliders that I talked about before. And, and if, you can, if you can disturb those structures, you can turn stuff on and off. And you can make amazing stuff like, for instance, this clock. Um, um, yeah, here's, a, here's another example um, that kind of shows um, how you can use lots of gliders to put together in the middle another structure. Let me just speed it up a little bit. And so what this does is like, there's lots of gliders that collide in just the right way to build another glider. And here you can kind of start to see how, how the game of life, how, the, how, how that name kind of makes sense. Like the way that I look at this, this almost looks like, I don't know, this reminds me a little bit of, of, of this is how I imagine, you know, that like proteins are built inside of inside of the body. You know, like I like I know it's not exactly like this, but like from from this much complexity, everything gets put together, and then some product is manufactured here. Um, yeah, that's very very cool. And the last one that I wanted to show you here is this one, and let me run it. And again, this is just a bunch of cells that turn on and off, 
And but let's zoom out and let's see what this actually is here. If we zoom out, we see here that uh, there's these big grids and, and they consist of glider guns that like a, 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 a structure that creates a glider is called a glider gun. So there's glider guns that shoot out gliders and those gliders go all the way to the middle and they annihilate against gliders that come from the other side. And that makes this, this um, square here. And if we zoom out further, then we see that those squares form something else. And as I zoom out, I should also turn it, make it a little bit faster. Um, to see what's actually happening here. So let me just make it even faster. So basically we're looking at a pixel display here, if we zoom out, and if I run it even faster, hopefully we can see something. And see, like now, like some pixels turned off, some pixels turned on. And what what this turns out to be is is actually the game of life. So here is the game of life simulated inside of the game of life which is completely insane when you think about it, um, how, how stuff can come about from such simple rules. And so the idea of being able to build a computer in this, like now you can kind of see that, hey, like that's not even so far-fetched there. This is, this is a computer program that's run inside of the game of life, namely it's running itself, which is completely insane. Uh, all right, so uh, I thought because this is such a simple algorithm to just make that algorithm ourselves. So let's get going on that. All right, I have here a brand new Shader Toy. If you are new to Shader Toy, Shader Toy is a website that allows you to create shaders, which are little programs to create visual effects right in your browser. And that's a really cool thing to play with and you can learn a lot of stuff. So I would definitely recommend you checking this out. I have a whole uh, series on shader coding. Uh, check out the video for absolute beginners below if you're interested. Uh, if, you, if you're just interested in Game of Life, you can still follow along with this. Uh, there might be some things that, you know, I go over a bit quick, but uh, then at least you know uh, what other video to watch to really master this. Uh, so, but for now, let's just get started here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just make a black screen. So I'm going to go over here, say VEC3, uh, like that. So that's a black screen. Let's just get rid of this. Um, all right. So <clears throat> now if you follow some of my other videos, then, um, then you know that we always do all the stuff in the image tab. Um, but uh, one kind of drawback to shaders is that shaders are 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 stateless like you, you you cannot store a state inside of a shader like it doesn't know about its previous state and in this case in the case of the game of life we do need the previous state in order to compute the current state and so uh, for that what we have to do is we have to make use of buffers uh, so so this image tab like writes directly to the screen and we can't read directly from the screen. Uh, but we can create another tab here, click plus and say, click one of the buffers, say buffer A. So now buffer A does the same as, 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 as this, just that buffer A writes not to the screen, but it writes to a buffer. Um, and that's great. If you want to uh, look at what your previous state was, then you can read from that buffer too. So let's use that. So let's go to the image tab and, and display this buffer. So what I do here, I go on image, I go to channel, and then I go to miscellaneous buffer A. And then here I can read from that buffer. So I can say texture, I channel zero with the V coordinate. Um, and then I get a blue screen. Why? Because in buffer A, we specified that we want to output the color blue. Um, uh, but we don't want to output the color blue, we want to do the game of life, right? And so for the game of life, what, what we should first do is we should first initialize the screen to some random values. And there's programmatic ways to do that, but I'm going to just read that from a texture. So I'm going to go in I channel 0, I'm going to go to textures, and then I'm going to pick gray noise medium. It doesn't really matter. You could pick noise small. You could pick any texture really, but let me just pick this one. And then I'm going to say uh, vec4 call equals texture 
i uh, i channel jesus boy my typing is not very good today zero uh with um with a uv coordinate right and the uv coordinate we're gonna have to make and we can just copy that from here from the main tab all right so now uh oh yeah and then we need to output it obviously so i'm gonna say over here frag caller equals call so now you see that we have a random screen. It's all red because this texture only has one channel, namely the red channel. Um, but for our purposes, that doesn't really matter. So now what we want to do is we want to initialize it, but only in the beginning. And then, and then after it's initialized, we should actually run, run the life simulation, right? So how can we do that? Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this to black. So at first it's black. And I'm going to say, if I frame is smaller than 10, then do call equals this. And what that's going to do is um, I frame is the, the number of um, the number of the frame that we're currently rendering. So when you reset it, that number will be zero. And then if this goes at 60 FPS, then for every second, like it goes, uh, you know, 60 frames kind of pass by. Um, so we've, we've seen I time before, this is I frame, this is just per frame and not per second. And so what this says is that for the t first 10 seconds, do that initialization and then afterwards just make it, um, make it black. Uh, why is that not working? Uh, huh, I'm not entirely sure why that doesn't, why that doesn't go black right after, but let me just go here and say, else call equals black and that should for sure work okay uh, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure not entirely sure why that doesn't work without this because because we're already saying that it starts at black um, Anyways, maybe maybe someone. Oh, okay, and so now it does work. All right, fine. All right, so now it like it only um, it only initializes it for the first ten frames, and then afterwards it like does the it does the second thing, which is to make it black. Right? It's just that we don't want it to make it black. There, we want to actually do the live simulation. Right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here this is initialize, and here it's do life. All right, and for do life, what we need is we need to first know if the current pixel is, is dead or alive. Um, and for that, I'm gonna make a Boolean, bool, and I'm gonna say um, bool alive equals, uh, and then I'm going to read the current pixel. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna do that with a, so normally we do texture, and the texture function takes as an input a UV coordinate that is normalized between 0, 0 and 1, 1. Uh, and it does all kinds of texture filtering and stuff like that for minification and maxification. Um, it does interpolation, color interpolation and whatnot. Uh, but in this case, we don't want that. So I'm just gonna use a different function called Texel Fetch. And Texel Fetch doesn't do any of that interpolation. Uh, at least I believe it doesn't. But it, it takes, it takes uh, instead of instead of uh, a normal HTV coordinate, it takes a pixel coordinate. And, um, and so I'm gonna read from I channel one, and in I channel one over here, I'm going to put our buffer. So this is basically reading from the previous frame, right? Because this thing writes the buffer A, and here I'm reading from buffer A, right? Uh, so text fetch and this, and then uh, this one needs uh, the pixel coordinate as an input. And a pixel coordinate needs, a, a vector, needs to be a vector of integers. So we have to convert it to a vector of integers like this. And then it needs a MIP map as well, which is the... the uh, anyways, it's too far to get into it right now, but just zero is fine uh, for that. It's the unmipped version of this texture. Um, and then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna look at the R at the red component of that texture, and I'm gonna say, if that red component is larger than 0 0.5, then this expression evaluates to true, meaning that, because in the beginning, those values are between black and white, and they could be any, any 
any decimal value in between there. And so here I'm just saying, well, if it's, it's, if it's bigger than 50% gray, then you're alive, otherwise you're dead. Okay, so that's that. Uh, and then we also need to know how many neighbors we have, right? So for that, I'm going to say int num equals get neighbors and get neighbors at, at the same position, right? At the IVEC frag court position. Um, so go over there, go over here. And so there we have the number of neighbors. So let's make that function. So I'll go here, say int uh, get neighbors, get neighbors. And that takes as an input uh, an IVEC to position. And as an output, it's going to give me the number of neighbors, right? So for that, I'm going to say int num equals zero to begin with. And then yet we're going to return the number of neighbors. And then inside of here, we're going to have to go through the neighbors to check one by one whether they're dead or alive. And so for that I'm going to make two, um, two for loops. Uh, and they're going to start at minus one and they're going to be smaller than or equal to one and then y plus plus. Uh, so that's just a for loop where y starts at minus one, the second time it gets in there y equals zero and the third time y equals one. And I'm going to do the same thing for the x. All right, so let's go over here, do that, and call this x, x and x. And now I'm going to textil fetch, textil fetch from i channel, channel uh, one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fetch from position p from pixel position p. Um, plus some offset, and the offset is uh, an IVEC2 of x and y. So this x and, so this offset is, well, like because x goes from minus 1 to 1, y goes from minus 1 to 1. So basically it just goes at the current pixel, and then the offset just like iterates through all the, all the neighboring pixels. Um, like that, and then I also have to say at MIP0, and then I'm going to look at just the red component of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing as what I did for the alive here. I'm going to say, okay, well, if that is larger than 0.5, uh, then, and this is, uh, this is just a way to convert this, then return one, otherwise return zero. That's what, this is just an if, like an if then statement. Like this basically says, if, if this expression is true, then return one, otherwise return zero. That's what it what it is. And then I could just say num plus equals this text will fetch that. Okay, so now there's one thing with this, which is that this one also counts itself as well, right? Because it go because if if my offset for y is zero and my offset for x is zero, then I'm, then I'm looking at the current cell, and I'm right now I'm counting that as a neighbor, which is gonna uh, throw a spanner in the works, so we're going to have to uh, make sure we skip that one. So we can say if x equals 0 and y equals 0, then continue. And continue just means just break off the rest of this loop of, the, of this iteration and go to the next iteration. So that should be our get neighbors function. Um, and now let's see here. Well, let's see if this compiles first of all. Okay, so it doesn't. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so num is an integer. Num is an integer right over here. And here, because I have a decimal dot there, it, it, it implies that I have a float. So I should just get rid of that, and that works. Okay, and now we just have to apply our three rules. Um, uh, of the game of life. So the first rule was uh, any cell with two or three live neighbors survives. So first let's let's make um, let's make a float call up next and that is whether whether uh, the cell will be dead or alive in the next generation and we set it to dead which is zero um, and then here we can just write that right we can just do that. Uh, so that's a dead that's a dead cell, but like now we can apply a rule. So we can say if the cell is alive and 
um, the number of, uh, of neighbors equals 2 or the number of neighbors equals 3, well then we know that in the next iteration we should be alive. Next equals 1. Um, yeah, I suppose we can make this an int as well if we want. We just do int. We don't have to put decimal dots everywhere. Um, and um, else, uh, else if I'm not alive and my number of neighbors equals exactly three, well then I should also be alive in the next generation. And otherwise, else. I should be dead, right? Next equals zero. I mean, we're also already saying it here, but I'm just writing it out here so that we have all the three, uh, all the three rules. So let's see what that does. So we have to reset this and play this. Okay, so that didn't work. So we made a mistake somewhere, of course. Um, let me try to figure this out. Um, Mm. Mm. Neighbors. Um. I channel one. I channel one. Why don't you work? Well, it doesn't die right away. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is not and, this is or. Right? It's like if the number is two or it's three. So let's just see what that does. Now look at that! It's alive! <laughs> it's alive and it's looking pretty spiffy. All right, so let's make this full screen. Okay, so there are a bunch more things obviously to say about this and to make this effect better, uh, but the video is already quite long, so I'm going to do that in the next video. Um, so yeah, so if you made it this far, then I take it that you uh, really like this video. And so if you do, then uh, please subscribe. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You can always unsubscribe tomorrow if you if you think this isn't worth it. But it really helps. Uh, uh, it helps me a lot in in order to uh, grow this community and keep going with this. So um, so yeah. So if you liked it, then uh, please do so. Uh, if you follow this and you make something cool with it, then here, let me just go again because it died. Uh, let me just set this to the first 100 frames so we can get this full screen. There we go. Um, if you make something cool with this um, or with any of, of my other uh, videos, then I would love to. I would love to see it. I always like to see what people make with my with my videos. Or just if you found something interesting that you that you think uh, uh, everybody should know and you want to share, then uh, please let me know about that and maybe we can make a video about it. So, uh, anyways, I hope you liked it and I hope to see you 